Hi guys, welcome back. It's uh, October the 14th. I've just been planting out these overwintering lettuces on this side of the greenhouse. So these are Hill 2. Uh, I've got there a dozen. And then about yeah nine of the Brune de Ver. So again a contrasting leaf colour. It's nice to have a, a mix of different um, leaf colours in your salad. And um, those spring onions, I'm hoping to get those out over the weekend. If I just swing you around in the first frame there, I just need to get that sorted and then they're going to go in there. With Hopefully I'll have room for some more lettuces. And then that will leave a room, a little bit of space just to get a little row of um, Flam's lettuce. I'm going to transplant some from one of the beds just into here. And then pretty much... Um, that's us planted up in, inside the greenhouse. Anyway, these chives are looking quite nice now, as is the uh, parsley's looking really good. That's another big pot of chives. And then we've still got some basil here, which probably need to take inside, to be honest with you. Feed it as well. It's just going a little bit yellow, so it's probably using up the nutrients that was in the compost. So just a quick scoot around the beds here, uh, this broccoli, I'll cook that today because I don't really want to let it get much bigger than that, it's just a nice head there. And there's some small side shoots as well, which I'll be able to take and enjoy. So that's worked out well, it was just an odd, the rest of them in here are Virtus Savoy cabbage, which if you look you can see they're already started to hurt but they're sort of more for Christmas time or possibly just after and again it's got this kind of downy mildew or whatever it is but I think I'll get away with it I just need to go around and pull some of the lower leaves off which uh, you know the, the sort of this type of thing there just get rid of those and I've been going on and <laughs> on it seem endlessly about these third sowing of French beans but look at this you know they kind of, I reckon they I'll pick those probably the next couple of days that's that's amazing I'm really chuffed about that I didn't think I was going to get any and the other thing that's kind of blown me away is just how fast this Mizuna has grown back I mean the ruby mustard has done well but if you look at the difference in size this Mizuna is incredible and uh, I'll put a, at the end of the video, I'll put one of those um, card things up that shows you when I sheared it all back and it wasn't that long ago, I can't just tell you it was two or three weeks but the, the amount of regrowth is just really taking me by surprise. Today we had another picking of the spinach and the chard and see it's got some of the leaf miner here uh, but you know I'm not too worried about it but hopefully that'll keep going and they just keep uh, giving us some greens throughout the winter. And we're still getting courgettes, believe it or not. We haven't had a frost here yet, so I'll just keep them going as long as possible. But that's, I'll leave it for another day too, and then I'll take that one. I think there's one over here as well. Yeah, look at that. Wow. That's amazing. October the 14th. Salad bed, this, uh, this little row of radish they're making up already. The Amsoy mustard is its just amazing stuff. And again, I'm thinking, I just don't, I've only got a few plants in really, but it's, it's too many, you know. Maybe that little bit there would be enough. And again, you know, the salad rocket, it, it, it's going to flower, but what I'll do is I'll just cut those flowering stems out and try and just keep it going as long as possible and look at these radishes <laughs> absolutely you know little, I don't know what that is some kind of little bug something it doesn't bother me but look at those absolutely fantastic the foliage on the blueberries is just stunning absolutely gorgeous and this raw pongo French beans, this was the first row that I sowed. And if you look down here, you can see there's quite a few pods on there, which are just kind of drying off nicely. So 
again probably over the weekend some more here uh, what I'll probably do is pull plants out that have got the most pods on and hang them in the greenhouse hang them upside down to dry because I really do like this variety and I want to I want to make sure I've got seed for next year I mean I do have some but it's nice to save fresh seed and finally over here in the carrot bin I haven't let's take the lid off there you see I can did uh, take the tops off if, uh, they're growing back slightly I'm just going to uh, see if I can pull one out look at that that's Autumn King 2 a showstopper <laughs> they won't all be like that of course but uh, yeah I'll have that for tonight's tea how's about that eh? brilliant so guys it's the 15th of October much better day horrible yesterday really really heavy rain right so anyway I've uh, had a bit of a sort out and uh, got this frame cleared and you see you've got spring onions in there some hill two lettuces and a few um, rocket and then managed to sort this one out a little bit still I've got to keep these propagators in here until I find some more space but um, I've got the, so I've moved the shallots in uh, they've already got roots now underneath which is brilliant and then just what's left of the hill two there's a few brune de ver there and some rocket I hope I'll find room in the greenhouse perhaps for that and then this bit I was going to put some um, lamb's lettuce here but I decided to keep those outside see how they do move my shit out of the way um, so that I had a few more rocket left so I put them in there and then these uh, Miracle of Four Seasons looking good you can see the new growth coming here now so all I need to do is just go through and remove anything like you know that's a bit damaged and these earlier leaves here just kind of remove those don't let those don't allow those on really um, and then doing so it'll encourage just a few more and then obviously once we start I mean we could start harvesting almost now you know leaf that size obviously the more we pick the more it'll keep throwing new leaves out which is what you want down on the micro orchard it's uh, still the 15th of October uh, got another great scoop on firewood so this is a uh, horse chestnut they decided to bring down the rest of the big tree up near where my house is um, and some of it is like I say was it's a good job they actually sawed some of these you know because that thing was like out you know massive I just and so managed that on my own anyway um, the rest of that is the willow that's the first lot I got so obviously I I'm still going to be dead busy splitting it, logging and splitting these up but uh, yeah I was really pleased to uh, have got that because we've started we've been having a few fires now on the log burner so that's going to keep me going during the winter splitting that lot so I'm just having a wander about there's a few jobs to do the most important of which uh, is getting the elephant garlic in we've got two fine days tomorrow on Tuesday possibly Wednesday so the elephant garlic is going to go in this bit here it won't take much because uh, it's got the, it's had the membrane this is where the gooseberry bushes were so just have to uh, cut that back and it won't really need digging over just rake it over and they can go straight in there and then in this this loganberry here all these side shoots what I tend to because if I leave them like that they tend to get damaged in the winter gale so I just go one two two or well, maybe three buds and just cut it off so it leaves a little stump on with three buds on they'll shoot out next spring so I've got that to do and then just turn around uh, say so this bit here uh, that's going to be asparagus so I've ordered it but that's won't be delivered till you know kind of March I think it is or something like that uh, this row of autumn raspberries is coming out but 
I'm going to wait until um, you know it's all all the leaves have gone and everything. So there's no big sweat to do that. I'm going to keep there's just over half a row of autumn raspberries there. You can see the leaves are fading fast now actually, and those are summer fruiting. I need to get those new canes tied in. Uh, I'll need to sort something out with this uh, top worked pear tree. Remove some of the height from these um, grafts. See, they've done really well. And all this new growth, um, any any stuff like this that's hanging down, I'm going to cut that back to more the, the upright stuff. This big branch here, there, that's coming right across, I'm going to take that back at least to probably there. And then I've still got plenty I can have for scion wood. Because I might, don't know, I might just have to put some fresh grafts in that side. I'm not sure. But anyway, we'll see. I've got these blackcurrant cuttings to pot up. And weed this bit out here. Um, the gooseberries. Again, you can see that as soon as those leaves are gone, they'll need pruning back. I'll get those pruned back. Hi guys, so I was mentioning about planting the elephant garlic yesterday when I was filming, so here it is. It's a mixture of, uh, you know, what you call rounds and um, cloves. And uh, if you look, again, I'm hoping, if I try and hold it against the wall there, you can see they've been in the fridge for ooh, about three to four weeks, maybe three weeks anyway, definitely. You can see the roots there, those fine white roots coming out. That's exactly what we want. Let me just try and um, see if I can get another one out of the bag to show you. <laughs> Holding the camera. Let's look at that one. So again, if you can see that, tons of white roots on there. In fact, they wouldn't have needed to be that big. I, I, I've just been busy with other things, so otherwise, you know, I mean, five mil would have been fine. Uh, so I'll have to be quite careful I don't damage those. With the cloves, um, there are fewer roots. There are roots on them, but fewer, but they should be okay. So anyway, I'm going to head off down to the micro orchard today and uh, see if we can get these bad boys planted. Catch you later. Alright guys, down on the micro orchard, so like I said yesterday, this is uh, where I'm going to put the elephant garlic. I've pulled this membrane back and just folded it up. You can see where those holes were, where the gooseberry bushes correspond to kind of where some of the weeds come through, but it's relatively clean actually, there's, there's very little weed, so first thing is really just to remove that weed, uh, and then I've got some blood fish and bone. So I'm just going to sprinkle on and fork in. And it's just a matter of uh, planting the bulbs out. Alright guys, there we go, I've got the weeds out. There was quite a few uh, bits of old gooseberry root, but they came out pretty easily, to be honest. And then I've just, you can see I've put some blood fishing bone, which I'm just going to fork that lightly in. And, um, and we'll get planting, it's as simple as that. I'm just using a plank as a straight edge. And uh, I'll start off with the rounds. I won't go into it in any massive detail. I'll put a card or a link up at the end of the video. I've got a video in more detail if you want to know about planting elephant garlic. But the main thing is obviously just get it the right way. So that's the basal plate that goes to the bottom. That's the top goes to the top, and plant it at least twice the depth of the bulb. And um, you can't go far wrong really. And then what I'll do is. They'll hopefully they'll come through, so I'll do a follow-up when they've come through. Then I'll just tick away over the winter, and then come sort of like um, early March, I'll give them a top dressing of 6x or something like that to give them a boost. And uh, everything should be well. All right, there we go, guys. I've got them in. Uh, I'll put old fire guards over and pieces of fire guard just really to keep the cats off. There's a lot of cats around the neighbourhood here, and there's nothing more they like than fresh soil to come and do the business in obviously once the garlic's come through I'll uh, 
I'll take them off and then I can always put a bit of netting over or something if need be. Right guys, it's time to pick these Ferrari beans. Uh, it's pretty blustery so I'm not going to carry on with filming due to the wind noise, but I'll bring you back when I pick them. There we go guys, not a bad haul actually. Uh, that's the third sowing, a third sowing this season of uh, Dwarf French beans. That's variety Ferrari by the way. So next job is to go through the Pongo French beans and just collect any pods now for um, seed. I'll go and do that now. Radio. So there's a few pods on here. Better sort of like that colour really. Uh, but you know, hopefully they'll dry out. As I rate them that highly, these pongo beans, you know, I, as I said, I have got some seed, but uh, any chance of just getting a plan B and having some more, I'm not going to turn that up. Uh, not sure, I mean, ideally, you know, they want to be kind of like that. So these are probably too green. I can feel the seeds in them. It's just whether they're ripened enough, but it's worth, it's worth having a go. 